and maintenance, whether it be on the Beaver or one of the more complex aircraft, you will use engine instruments every day. These instruments will tell you whether the engine is working properly at various throttle settings. Engine instruments are important to the aviator too. They warn him and give him a chance to land before he has serious engine trouble. These seven instruments are the basic engine instruments found in most aircraft. We will learn about three types. The pressure instruments, the temperature instruments, and the tachometer. There are three basic pressure instruments. The fuel pressure gauge measures the pounds per square inch of pressure delivered to the carburetor. The oil pressure gauge does a similar job, measuring pressure delivered to the main oil gallery of the engine. The manifold pressure gauge differs from the other two. It reports on the pressure in inches of mercury of the vaporized fuel as it flows from the carburetor to the cylinders. Now how do these instruments work? Both the fuel pressure and oil pressure gauges contain a Bourdon tube. This is simply a short length of thin wall copper or bronze tubing. It is open at one end and sealed at the other. To be a Bourdon tube, it must be bent to a C shape. Now how does it measure pressure? Very simple. The open end of the Bourdon tube is coupled to a system where we wish to measure pressure. In this case, the fuel or oil system. Now as the engine is started, pressure builds up in the system. Pressure also flows into the tubing coupled to the Bourdon tube. As pressure exerts itself, we see how the Bourdon tube works. The pressure tends to force the C shape back to its original straightness. As pressure increases and decreases, the Bourdon tube straightens and curls in proportion to the pressure. A mechanical linkage attached to the moving end of the Bourdon tube enables us to measure the pressure in the system. This, of course, is a simplified drawing. Actually, the scale is not on the Bourdon tube. As pressure increases the movement of the tube, the indicator tells us the degree of pressure in the system. As pressure decreases, the indicator returns towards zero. In the instruments, a mechanical linkage attached to the Bourdon tube operates a rotating pointer on a scale. Fuel and oil pressure gauges of this type have one poor feature. Since the Bourdon tube is inside the case, it is called a direct indicating gauge, and it is necessary to have tubing carrying fuel and oil under pressure into the cockpit. If either line should leak, the cockpit might be sprayed with fuel or oil, causing a fire hazard. Direct indicating gauges are used, but another type called Autosyn remote indicating gauges are preferred. Here we have two gauges called receivers. Unlike the direct indicating gauges, this type does not contain the Bourdon tube. The Bourdon tube is located in a sending unit called a transmitter. Each gauge will have its own transmitter located wherever pressure is to be measured. Remote indicating gauges have only an electrical cable running into the cockpit. The cable connects two parts of a device called an autosyn or remote indicator. In simple terms, here is how the autosyn operates. 
The transmitting unit attached to the fuel or oil system contains the Bourdon tube. When pressure is applied, the Bourdon tube uncurls, turning the rotor. Located in the cockpit is the other half of the auto sin, the receiver. When the rotor of the transmitter turns, the rotor of the receiver also turns, moving in the same direction. An indicator pointer is attached to the rotor. Connecting the transmitter to the receiver are electric wires. When the rotor of the transmitter is repositioned by the Bourdon tube, the rotor sends a signal to the receiver. The receiver responds to the signal by turning in the same direction. Autosins have two advantages. They make fuel and oil lines in the cockpit unnecessary, and they simplify installation in large multi-engine aircraft where engines are distant from the cockpit. Autosins may be used on all of the pressure instruments, as well as many other aircraft instruments. We've learned how Bourdon tubes actuate fuel pressure and oil pressure gauges. Now let's turn to the manifold pressure gauge. Here another simple device is employed. To measure manifold pressure, an aneroid and a diaphragm bellows are used. The aneroid bellows is sealed at standard atmospheric pressure, 29.92 inches of mercury. The diaphragm bellows is connected by tubing to the intake manifold. Both bellows are attached to the instrument case. A solid link attaches the interface of the diaphragm bellows to the interface of the aneroid bellows. Another link operates the mechanical linkage of the dial pointer. As manifold pressure changes, the aneroid bellows expand or contract in counteraction to the contraction and expansion of the diaphragm bellows. This causes the mechanical linkage in turn to operate the dial pointer. The aneroid bellows provides a standard reference pressure with which manifold pressure in the diaphragm bellows is compared. This indicates to the mechanic or aviator the pressure of the fuel-air mixture in the manifold. The manifold pressure gauge is quite similar to an altimeter or barometer, but its purpose is to measure manifold pressure rather than atmospheric pressure. Remember these facts. Fuel and oil pressure gauges have a Bourdon tube, either in the instrument or in the transmitting unit. If it is in the transmitting unit, an autosyn remote indicator must be used. The manifold pressure gauge has an aneroid, which detects changes in pressure and a mechanical linkage to operate the pointer on the dial. An autosyn may be used to indicate manifold pressure. The temperature instruments are all remote indicating thermometers. They measure the temperature at various points on the engine and indicate it on the instrument panel. There are numerous temperature measuring devices, but only three are used in these instruments. They are the vapor pressure thermometer, the Wheatstone bridge thermometer, and the thermocouple. Let's take a look at their working principles. The vapor pressure thermometer is a very simple device. It consists of a metal bulb with small diameter tubing running to a Bourdon tube. The bulb, tubing, and Bourdon tube are filled with a volatile liquid which is sensitive to changes in temperature. When the fluid is heated, it vaporizes and expands. This causes the Bourdon tube to straighten and operate a mechanical linkage in the instrument. This linkage moves the pointer on the gauge to reflect a higher reading. As the fluid in the bulb cools, it contracts. The Bourdon tube curls and a lower temperature is reflected on the gauge. The vapor pressure principle is used in oil temperature gauges. Here we see the bulb which is inserted in the oil system. 
the tubing and the instrument containing the Bourdon tube, and its mechanical linkage. Oil temperature gauges may also use another of our three devices. The Wheatstone Bridge Thermometer is an electrical device. It is frequently used in multi-engine aircraft where long lengths of liquid-filled tubing would be impractical. The Wheatstone Bridge Thermometer has a bulb which is inserted at the point where temperature is to be measured. This bulb, however, is not liquid-filled. It contains a resistor of special wire which increases its resistance to the flow of electricity as its temperature rises. From the resistor, wires run to the thermometer instrument in the cockpit. Located in the instrument are two coils and the resistor, which are not affected by heat. The pointer is attached to a Darsonville galvanometer for measuring the flow of electricity. The dial is calibrated in degrees of temperature. As the heat-sensitive resistor rises in temperature, it resists the flow of electricity. The temperature gauge shows the change of resistance as current flows in the galvanometer. The Wheatstone Bridge oil temperature gauge differs very little in appearance from the vapor pressure type, except that it has a cable rather than tubing running from the oil system to the cockpit. A Wheatstone Bridge thermometer is also used for carburetor air temperature gauges. In this case, the resistance bulb is placed in the air intake rather than in the oil system. Our third temperature measuring device, the thermocouple, is based on the following electrical principle. Two wires composed of two different metals are firmly joined together at one end. The opposite ends are connected to a sensitive electrical meter. When heat is applied to the joined ends, electrons will flow through the wires, and their flow will be indicated on the meter. This type of thermometer is used for high temperature applications, such as the cylinder head temperature gauge. The two dissimilar metals are usually joined in a ring, which replaces the spark plug gasket on the hottest cylinder. In this way, the engine's highest cylinder head temperature is reported in the cockpit. Now, a quick review. The oil temperature gauge can be either a vapor pressure or Wheatstone bridge thermometer. The carburetor air temperature gauge is a Wheatstone bridge thermometer. And the cylinder head temperature gauge is a thermocouple. The final engine instrument is the tachometer. This is also an electrical instrument, and the most common type is called a synchronous rotor tachometer. As we shall see, this name pretty well describes its principle of operation. On the aircraft engine's accessory case is mounted a small electric generator. It is called a synchronous generator, and it has a strong permanent magnet as a rotor. In the instrument case is a synchronous motor. The generator and motor are connected by three wires. As the engine rotates, it turns the generator's rotor. The turning rotor sets up alternating voltages. These alternating voltages act on the rotor in the motor, causing it to turn at a speed proportionate to the generator's speed. As the engine speed changes, the generator speed changes, and the motor in the tachometer makes a proportionate change. The tachometer's motor and dial pointer are connected by a linkage called a magnetic coupling. As the generator and motor revolve at various speeds, the magnetic coupling deflects the pointer to indicate the exact engine RPM. To review, the synchronous rotor tachometer consists of a generator driven off the accessory drive, a three-wire cable, and a motor. The motor turns a magnetic drag coupling, which positions the pointer on the calibrated dial. The tachometer is perhaps the most important instrument used for troubleshooting. 
but all of these instruments give information about the efficiency of an engine. They provide a constant check on conditions inside the power plant. Without pressure, temperature, and RPM instruments, an engine could destroy itself before anyone is aware of its happening. Engine instruments give a warning before serious damage is done.